So you might have noticed it's been a while since I've talked about the, oh, the $100,000 PC. And I'm approximating the cost because I actually don't know exactly how much it's gonna end up coming to yet because there's still mm, a few things that are to be determined about the final configuration. But there's a good reason for all of that. I've been waiting on some really important hardware to continue my testing. So right now, we've got a problem with the current configuration. This motherboard can accept a measly seven PCI Express 16X devices. I mean, what kind of chump nonsense is that for a $100,000 computer that I aim to have six video editors editing 8K footage off of at the same time? So I got in touch with uh, actually a couple of really special companies. Uh, one of them is Thermaltake, who sent over a bunch of their PCI Express extenders. I'm gonna use these to test running a bunch of graphics cards off of this thing without water blocking them all up uh, beforehand, which is what I did last time, which was super stupid, because then when I had issues, it was, it was a nightmare. And this, this, is actually a bunch of boxes from a company called One Stop Systems, who if you're not in the enterprise space, you've probably never heard of. But if you are, even then you might not have heard of them. And they make PCI Express extension solutions, allowing you to take a single slot and adapt it to, in this case, eight slots. How does that work? Well, we're gonna find out. Not cheaply, though. Thanks to Videoblocks for sponsoring this video. They're a great subscription-based resource for downloading stock footage, video, and more. Check out the link below to learn more. So the funny thing about these guys was when I got in touch with them, um, the bloke that I spoke with was actually a fan of the channel and he was like super into working with us and he was like, yeah, let me, let me carry this up the chain. And then I, I spoke with his manager and she wasn't as familiar personally, but then her husband was apparently super into Linus Tech Tips and she was like, okay, yeah, no, you know, this sounds, this sounds great. We'd love to work with you. And then I followed up and they basically said, yeah, everything's shipped but I hadn't actually worked out what I needed or, or really talked to them about it much yet. So I am not 100% sure what's here yet. So we're gonna find out together. I did know this board was coming. So they've actually got a bunch of different PCI Express expansion products. Even you can get like chassis that allow you to plug something from the back of one computer into the back of another one that looks like a computer, but it's actually just a box full of PCI Express expansion. Um, or you can get a bare bones board, which it would appear is what they've sent to me. But I'm not 100% sure how or if any of it is going to work. So this guy right here is their HIB35X4. This is a PCI Express X4 to cable adapter. So this is gonna go into our system and is going to adapt a PCI Express slot to a cable that we can plug into the back of the system. This is PCI Express over a cable. I'm not talking like, you know, Thunderbolt. I'm talking pure, full capability PCI Express. Trippy stuff, right? Look at this connector. Oh, that feels good. We're turning the one PCI Express slot on the other end here into one, two, three, four, four, eight more, eight more PCI Express slots, five eight pin power connectors and a 24 pin. What are they expecting you to plug into this thing? Honestly, what they're doing is not that unusual. In fact, your motherboard, you watching right now, your motherboard probably has similar technology because you're probably aware already if you followed our CPU reviews that especially mainstream CPUs don't have a ton of PCI Express lanes on them. So then how exactly is it that you end up with, you know, four 16X slots and a bunch of PCIe 4X slots when your CPU only has like 20 to 24 lanes? 
Well, the way that they do that is using what's called a PLX chip. So these are effectively, think of them as kind of like a network switch where you take one ethernet connection and you split it out to eight computers for PCI Express. So this is gonna be a very high-end PCI Express switcher chip, and then you're gonna find those same kinds of adapters on here. So that allows all of this traffic to share this one interface. Now to be clear, you're not gonna be able to connect eight 16X graphics cards and get the full performance out of all of them at exactly the same time, but I'm planning to use it for USB 3, something where with six editors, not everyone's gonna be slamming it at exactly the same moment, so it should work fine. Just knock on wood till, you'll, till your knuckles are raw. Right, there was another piece of hardware that I needed to continue my testing. So we only have a couple of Optane PCI Express SSDs in the building. So what I wanted was to swap out my 750s for these and have a look at what VM performance looks like running on Optane RAID 1. The other thing I was waiting for, cable mods. Sent over some PCI Express power connectors that I'm gonna need to uh, extend the cables for these graphics cards that I'm gonna be running on extensions. I just found the most perfect spot for it. You guys never would have believed that I didn't know exactly what I was doing here. So I've got the, the host adapter installed on the other side. I throw in a second power supply here, and then check this out. Oh, no. Now that could work. Man, we'd have to like pull this panel off and maybe like laser cut them or something, but we could have all our USB ports right on the back of the system like that. Anyway, for today though, this is just a, this is just a dry, dry run. I'm gonna bring it around the other side. So with this expansion daughter board, we're gonna have a total of six remaining, because I'm gonna take up one of the PCIe slots with the host card, plus eight, so that is 14 PCI Express slots, plus all the ones that I am adapting from the U.2 plugs on the motherboard. So, uh, is 18 PCI Express slots. Just the right number. Creep 100. Okay, let's get our PCIe power. And then let's hook up some graphics cards here, shall we? We're just gonna do four graphics cards for today. So some of the editors are gonna get full 16X slots for their graphics cards and others are gonna be stuck with a little bit less, but for the purposes of what we're doing, that's not gonna affect performance in any meaningful way. So we're just gonna pick some random slots here. And install some GPUs, baby. So those will go there, sure. So that'll go there. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there, does that work? Is that kind of reasonable? We never claimed this video wasn't gonna be madness. You knew what you were clicking on. Okay. Leaning Tower of Titans, uh, right? Yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Okay, that's on. I mean, should we do a quick test and make sure this even works before we go any further? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Is this on? What the heck? Ooh, it turned off. Let's give it one more try. Because if there's one slot that doesn't like a graphics card or something like that being in it, that's gonna be a big problem because I need to fill all of them with graphics cards. E -E. You know what I think it might be is our One Stop Systems expansion card because I don't have the power supply plugged into the target end of it yet. So it might not like something about what's going on here. So let's try it with just the graphics card so we're not changing too many variables at once here. There it is. Okay, all right. So while this is booting up, we need to go get ourselves another power supply and it can't be like some wussy power supply. It's gotta have, I, I gotta find out what kind of connectors these are. Are these PCI Express or are they, uh... Oh, oh crap. They're not PCIe. Oh man, it's gonna be ghetto. So this is interesting. Of our five AX1500Is, I apparently have three of them. 
And then we also have a 1600i that Jake apparently has checked out long term. What does he, what does he need a 1600i on his test bench for? Okay, let's go, let's go get one of the three AXIs that Jake has. So I have one on my bench. Uh -huh. I have one. We have like five. So. Yeah, so I have one in my... No, no, I have one in my rig at home. Yeah. I have one in the desk PC. Why would I not? Because it's so stupid. You're stupid. Why do you have so much crap here? Can you clean this up? <laughs> I mean, it's working out for me right now, but in general. <laughs> it's working to your okay. What did he do? Can you believe what Jake did to this power supply? You see, this is why. This is why I rage out at people for like the way that they treat the hardware around here sometimes. What the f Whoa. You say this like you've never seen it before. I have You're literally the only person who's ever used Holy it. Shit. And naturally the EPS connectors aren't even in here. Thanks, Jake. Should I just fire him? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> New plan. Jake did find another 1500i. So we're just gonna use that. This is the beauty of modular power supplies because like how else would you have ended up being able to Frankenstein a regular desktop power supply to power this weird board? All we gotta do is, uh, what the hell is this? Jake. Well, I mean, it makes it look like there's something look, there's wrong with it. Why did you put so much tape on it? So it doesn't fall off. It's fine. Okay. Break it out over here. Now I have no idea what triggers this thing to turn on. Here we go. Yep, let's get a bit of a better look at it. Whoa! <laughs> 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 okay, all right. we go there, there we go. All right, that's all looking peachy. Uh, editor, don't include that. These guys were very gracious to send us this stuff and I don't want them to see that. The bloke that I spoke with was actually a fan of the channel. Now, I do want to know if it's working. So here, why don't we grab our Optane drives? and throw those on there and see what happens. Obviously, with something like a high-speed storage device, we're not expecting to get our full performance out of it in this kind of a situation, but I just want to know if it's working at all. This is terrifying. Everything about this is wrong. Let's take a picture for Instagram. There they are! There's the Optane SSDs. Just like that, basically plug and play. You just have to make sure you actually plug all the things. It may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid, right? Gorgeous. So our Optane drives are being picked up by the OS, NVMe 0 and 1, and this is what I really need to know. This is going to tell me if this whole thing is going to work or not. Because if I can't pass through the controllers individually, then there's, I'm not going to be able to get everything hot pluggable. Look at all of these PLX bridges here. That is madness. So the update is mostly bad news. There is what's called an ACS override patch that you can enable to try to break individual items that are in a single IOMMU group out into their own IOMMU groups. But as far as Unraid knows, the, the code for the patch has been broken since Intel Skylake and it doesn't seem to be working here. Obviously this is much newer than Skylake. But they have suggested that if we shut this baby down pull the card out and put it in a Haswell or older system and see if that works, that maybe they could try fixing the patch to work on Skylake and then it might work in this system. So that's our, that's our first step here. Uh, well, we're not running this for very long, so we're just gonna put that there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that seems pretty stable. <laughs> All right, so this is where we find out if the hack will potentially work with our PCI Express splitter device. One thing that's nice is how plug and play this thing's been. These SSDs are both showing up perfectly, just plugged into a consumer board, so that's pretty cool. And honestly, we should still get some use out of it, even if it just means that all of our USB cards that we have plugged into it can't be passed through the VMs. It'll still be nice to have all of those ports 
Okay, so I can't reach my contact at Unraid, so what I'm gonna do then is just throw some USB cards in here and see if we can pass one through to something. Everything continues to get more ghetto. Now we have SSDs hanging off here. Aren't they beautiful? Our Renesas USB controller is showing up here. That's one of the ones that's plugged into the daughter board, but we still don't know if the override worked. So let's go ahead and let this populate. Remember, this doesn't tell us if we can get it working. This tells us if maybe we could get it working. Ooh, this looks like a very big group. So this is all the PLX stuff. Oh no, they're all in the same group. Damn it. Okay. It's not all bad. We still get the benefits of using a PCI Express switch for all our USB devices. So everything that we do hook up will be better managed and the whole thing does work really seamlessly. I had just really hoped for hot plug and it looks like that might be out of my grasp, however cool this hardware might be. Have you ever needed a beautiful shot of like mountains or wild animals or even something like an astronaut in space for your video, but you didn't have the time or budget to get it yourself? Well, Videoblocks has you covered with unlimited downloads through their member library that contains over 115,000 HD and 4K clips, along with After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and more. An additional marketplace for other footage is also available. So if you're a member, you save 40% and you get to support the artists because Videoblocks doesn't take a single cent. All the footage on Videoblocks is royalty free, which means you can keep and use the clip as many times as you want forever. And new footage gets added regularly. So you'll always have fresh new content to check out and use. Get all of this with an unlimited member plan at Videoblocks today at the link below. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed coming along for what would normally be like a behind the scenes type of troubleshooting for a project like this. If you guys disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed. Maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. As long as you don't plan to use PCI pass through for the individual things you have plugged into it for each one of your VMs. <gasps> I just had a new thought. Wait. What if every single slot got its own daughter board with the GPU and the USB on that? Okay, that's probably a project for another day. Let's just get the video editing working off this one system. Anyway, uh, sub subscribe and uh, check out our merch. And uh, we have that linked below and also our forum. You should join that.